So next I'm going to react to the story teaser trailer for the Divine Damsel of Devastation for Genshin Impact. Uh, this will be the Chinese recording but I'm pretty sure they're all the same considering that they used the original uh, opera singers uh, singing for all versions. So it shouldn't really matter which one I'm using. I assume the only difference would be the subtitles would be missing for this one. Um, which seems to be on the English ones, but for some reason not in the other um, audio recording ones. Uh, let's get to it. Darkness from the scrolls, reading into the dark arts. Reminds me of that scene from Neja where they're offering the children along with the food. Never would have thought Shenghe had black hair until I saw this. Red string fate that ties her and binds her homicidal instincts. She has really nice eyes. Mm, that was amazing. I remember when uh, this scene was used to reveal Yun Jin. I mean, this part I really enjoyed the way that she turns, her eyes, even the sound that she's making. But I remember there was a lot of people who originally saw this and reacted obviously negatively to it because it's not something they're used to. But it was um, it was very interesting to see how the community as a whole basically just found a new love for Chinese opera. I mean, she brings an entire new, new kind of elegance that other characters don't have. Obviously, being uh, in an opera troupe, she possesses the talents and art style that none of them have anyway. Um, the only other person I thought was really elegant in design was obviously um, Ayaka. But her elegance is in a different culture simply put it, I mean she's more, um, how do I say it, more of the noble class, the Yama, Yamato Nadeshko type of elegance, whereas here we're seeing a more expressive type of elegance with the way that she dances and shows her um, posture 
even with her singing and voice. I mean, her eyes here are amazingly animated. The detail they've added to this little section for the speak where she's basically saying that I have to um, amend or append the story and adding a new part to her original play to reflect the fact that um, she's met Xiang He, she's met the Traveller and she's witnessed them both fight off this new evil. And the way she kind of just goes from her singing voice to you know, talking to the audience. It, the two different tones and pitches are amazing. Uh, yeah, um, I've also seen the interviews with the opera singer in China. She, she was actually quite surprised how much fame she's gotten just for this role. I mean, because it's not a long role. It's not a long song. It's about two and a half minutes, maybe. But it has literally sent her to stardom for all of the fans and it's also revitalized a new interest um, at home in china for chinese operas of different kinds and at the same time i think it's also stirred up new interest in chinese communities across the globe and in um, foreign players who are new to chinese opera I think there was probably a period where everyone was looking up Chinese opera and trying to look for some really good ones, uh, see which ones were highly suggested. So, yeah, if anything, I, I believe Genshin Impact is one of those games that will probably continue to introduce us, us to new art styles. I would really love to see them do something like this again with Inazuma, Mondstadt, even some of the new regions. Um, we're obviously seeing a lot of love for the UA. I mean, with just the interlude chapters alone, which we've gotten two, they've all been focused on the UA. So hopefully we'll see some interlude chapters focused in the other regions as well. Uh, I, I do feel like Monster has been left out a little bit. I mean, I, I would love to see us go back to Monster, interact with Jean, interact with Venti, with everyone there, um, maybe for a new adventure. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.